Hi, I'm Kendall Alderman from Dancing Wood Music, and I fix instruments for ORF teachers, but I want to show you that you can do this yourself using a tuner and a belt sander. Tuning a lump of wood is really pretty easy. This is something that I learned from uh, Dennis Waring uh, about 20 years ago. He's uh, an ethnomusicologist, and he does, uh, does amazing jobs of, of getting instruments into children's hands in the Connecticut area. He told, told me about the bar and basically how to tune it. Everybody knows that if you take a bar and you make it shorter, it's going to go up in pitch. But what people don't realize is, just by looking at the back, you can tell that they made the pitch lower by taking a little bit off of this side. And if you're careful about taking a little bit off this side, you can make the instrument sound longer again. So you can go back and forth with this method until you've got a pitch that you really like. If you look at the end grain of the wood, you can tell that they left a lot of marks on it at the factory, and they also left a lot of gouges in the back. So you really don't have to be too shy about what you're going to be using on this bar, as long as you make sure that you seal it up after you're done to stabilize the wood. These two instruments that I'm refinishing are excellent examples. First of all, we've got this F right over here, which is considerably flat. And this one over here is just a little bit sharp. Now because, now because the work that we're doing is not going to be uh, really high quality finish work, it's just going to be a, a, a rough tuning, uh, we're using about an 80 grit sandpaper on the, uh, on the belt sander which I'm going to secure on the vise. Remember that with any power equipment you do have to be careful although if you touch the surface of this with your fingers it's not really going to do too much damage to you and you're also going to want to be sure to hold on firmly with your work. I would not use gloves for this because gloves can get caught and pulled so I'd recommend using bare hands. This was our F that was about 20 cents, maybe 25 cents flat. That's considerable. Uh, probably part of the reason is the damage that it sustained um, at one point. It lost a little bit here. Uh, but it also is a victim of being stored improperly um, and probably just age. So when I'm doing this, I'm going to be making the instrument shorter, taking a little bit off of each side. You want to maintain this distance of one quarter of the length of the instrument. So you want to take the same amount off the top and the bottom. So what I do is I put it on as squarely as I possibly can and count to about five and then flip it over and do the other side. And I might do this a couple of times until we finally get it um, to the pitch that we want. Going back and forth to the instrument and checking until we get it perfectly in tune. It's a little bit of trial and error.
almost there. Next we've got our other F that was just a little bit sharp. This is where you need to be careful. You could end up taking a little bit too much off the back. You have to be very gentle and quick with taking things off of the back surface. just a hair sharp. I can almost get it perfect on the first bounce, but I really want to go one little bit more. I am not a representative of any of the companies that make instruments or repair instruments. I only represent dancing wood music. My only hope is that you will take the time to tune your instruments so that your children will enjoy the experience that they have playing or instruments. If you're uncomfortable doing any of these procedures, don't do them. If you want me to do them, you can send them to Dancing Wood Music at dancingwoodmusic.com. I hope this helps.